these were exactly the laws that stopped trade unions being effective and stifled democracy in those countries. And we have to remember that people that led the campaigns for freedom in the Eastern Bloc and all over the world, including in this country, the right to vote, the right to have local democracy, the right to have a parliament of our peers, was led by the trade unions. And if they shackle the unions in this country, there will be no democracy and it will pave the way for a resistance-free, oppressive society. And I believe we're on the brink now of having the most right-wing, extreme and militant government that we've ever had that is declaring class war on ordinary people by uh, lifting the caps on bankers, uh, lifting the uh, progressive tax policies that we've had since the Second World War, and is going to bring in a barrage of cuts to our public services and further dilution of any worker regulation. They haven't announced this is cuts to our public services, in laws Mick, are all about. you're saying that you think coming down the line is, is swinging cuts to public services. What's that based on? Well, if you cut tax, if you cut tax and the amount of revenue that the government has... Well, they said they're going to grow the economy and that will help them invest in public services. Yeah, but everybody disagrees with them. I heard the, the chairman of the CBI and their chief economist. The chief economist of the TUC, the chief economist of the CBI and the, uh, the public uh, budget inspector um, was on TV last night saying, this will not work, this is a massive gamble. It's a massive transition, a redistribution of wealth from ordinary people to the super rich. Uh, millionaires from this budget will be paying tax at a lower rate than people on the mid 20,000s paying student loans. Students will have a higher marginal tax rate when they start work the multi-millionaires in this country. That is a regressive uh, transition from wealth, uh, progressive taxation towards dole outs for the super rich. A millionaire will be £55,000 richer next year because of these tax changes. And they want to suppress the unions so that there is no resistance on the streets and no resistance in the workplace. And let's not forget the right to protest is going to be severely curtailed and made illegal by the other white paper that's coming through and legislation that's coming through the Police Act, which the police don't even want. This is we're on the verge of a repressive regime led by right wing zealots. A repressive regime? That's a bit farmic, isn't it? Well, if you oppress the trade unions, you'll oppress everyone else. If you oppress the right to protest in the way that they, have, they envisage, you will oppress the entire country. But that will spring back. And we could see serious disturbance in this country if we don't get on with relieving the cost of living crisis and allowing people to have freedom. But they, of they are spending the potentially right, two hundred right billion to pounds. Their labor. They are spending potentially two hundred billion pounds on exactly that, helping businesses. Who are they giving the money to, though, Ben? Where is that money but it, going? It, but it is going to where help people and businesses. But where, Ben? Answer this question for me. It's unusual in an interview. Where will that money end up? You tell me, Mick. I know the answer. You tell me. It's paid directly to the energy. Yes, but companies. it is going to help people with the cost of living. They it have acted on that, have, to be fair. They're giving all of us, including me and you, a loan that we have to pay back through our energy bills over the next five to ten years. They are subsidising exploitation through the multi-billionaire oligarch energy companies. 50% of our energy comes directly from the North Sea. They could have taxed those companies so that they lowered the price at the source. What they're doing instead is collecting all of that money, the 100 billion or the 200 billion, whatever it ends up being, directly from us, the ordinary taxpayer and bill payer, and paying it directly to those energy companies. That is an outrage. And the quicker that's exposed by people like yourselves, the better. What, instead, what you do is sit there for three minutes, calling me a militant union baron. I didn't say that. Straight from, you did. I, straight, I asked if people think that of you. Straight from the Daily Mail playbook. No, right? I didn't what say that. What we've got to do is get a bit of balance. The billionaires in this society and around the world are being subsidised by right-wing zealous governments. And we're seeing that delivered in the first couple of weeks of this regime. And that is going to cause massive division in our society, which is good for no one. Even some of the Tories will be blanching at what's going on here. This is the biggest redistribution of wealth towards the rich that I've seen in my lifetime. No other government has attempted to do this. I can see it as a massive economic failure, but also as a massive social failure. And the repression of trade unions 
is the prelude to all of that. Okay. Because trade unions are the biggest democratic organisation in this society. They are going to stop the Royal College of Nursing, never mind about militants, the British Medical Association defending themselves and defending our health service. And don't think that they're not going to rip up our public services and put them to the walls of privatisation, just as they've done with the energy companies and the rail and our infrastructure. All of our services will be there in the hands of the oligarchs going forward. And that's why they want to disable and suppress the voice of the trade unions and the voice of the working class in this country.